Hello grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson six here, cognitive dissonance. And underneath it, I have put Carl Smith and Festinger because those are the people that did this experiment. Cognitive dissonance is actually um, now known as an idea um, because these guys uh, did so much research on it. We know a lot more about cognitive dissonance um, more people have done more research to expand it. Now, cognitive dissonance is an idea, and uh, this experiment is just an example of it, um, kind of where they started to get an idea of why um, these phenomenons occur. So let's get right into it um, and talk about what dissonance, cognitive dissonance is first. So we're gonna look at key point one and two first of all. So cognitive dissonance refers to a situation uh, involving conflicting attitudes, beliefs, or behaviors. So essentially, if you're speeding, and you know you're speeding, and you get that kind of mental discomfort that you're speeding, like you're breaking the rules, that is cognitive dissonance. Your actions and your beliefs are not meshing together. Um, so cognitive dissonance produces a feeling of mental discomfort, which leads to change uh, in, leading to a change in one of the attitudes, beliefs, or the behaviors. So if you're speeding, you know you're speeding and you feel bad about it, you will either say to yourself, oh, I'm not speeding that much, or you'll change your behavior and you'll slow down uh, to reduce the discomfort and restore the balance. You'll do one of those two things. Oh, like 100, 110 isn't that bad. So um, that kind of speeding is okay. You've justified it. For example, when people smoke, that is the behavior. They know smoking causes cancer. That is the cognition part of it. That is the belief part of it, the attitude part of it. Uh, they're in a state of cognitive dissonance. People will justify smoking in many different ways. I can quit whenever I want. I don't smoke that much. I smoke the light type, whatever that might be. And there are so many examples of dissonance in your life, in my life, in everyone's life. Um, it is just much more mentally comfortable to change our attitude than it is to change our behavior. So let's talk about that a little bit. But what actually happened in uh, our experiment. So this purpose of this, of this experiment was to investigate if uh, making people perform a dull task would create cognitive dissonance through a forced compliance behavior. So essentially they made them perform a dull task and then the forced compliance behavior was that they made them lie about it. They made them lie to create this dissonance. Their action and the, their action of telling someone uh, that that action was fun and then their actual belief about it, those were different. So they knew something was not true, but they were forced to do it anyway. Essentially, um, Fessner and Carl Smith made people perform this dull task and then they made people made them tell others that it was actually fun. They asked the participants to execute boring tasks such as turning pegs in a pegboard for a whole hour. Okay, Half the participants were paid a dollar and half the participants were paid twenty dollars. So there are two separate groups here. Um, then some of the participants were asked to tell the next participant, who was secretly an actor, that the task was fun. Now this is objectively a lie. Since the task was quite uh, monotonous and boring, the participants experienced different levels of cognitive dissonance. So the task was actually boring, that's what the person believed, but their action, what they were told to, what they had to tell someone was that it was actually fun and that created dissonance. Their beliefs and their actions did not line up. They then rated how enjoyable the task was in private to somebody else. So Fessner and Carl Smith had predicted that the participants who were paid $20 would experience less dissonance and as a result, they would rate the task as less enjoyable. So there's less dissonance because they were paid the $20 to do that task. They had another reason, they had a good reason to do that task for an hour. They were gonna get $20. Their prediction proved correct. The participants who were paid only $1 to perform the boring task faced a greater degree of dissonance than the ones who were paid $20. And because of this, 
They shifted their attitudes and perceptions of the task, and they rated it as more enjoyable to make themselves feel better. So essentially, someone was given $20, someone was given $1, and they performed the same task. They were then asked to rate how good it was. Well, the person who was paid $20 had no internal incentive in them to lie, and they said it was a bad task. It was boring. I did it for $20, but it was boring. The person who was paid $1 didn't have any external reason, any justification to say that the task was fun. They had to make it up in their head. So they would say, they would just say like, yeah, actually, you know, that wasn't too bad to make it seem like, you know, they didn't waste all their time. It made them feel better about it. And this is a complicated idea. And if you'd like to talk about it in person, we can do that at any time. But uh, I'm going to go over it again, I think, in the next couple of slides here. So the results. Being paid only a dollar is not, is not sufficient incentive for lying. And so those who were paid a dollar, they, they experienced dissonance. They could only overcome that dissonance, that mental uh, discomfort. They could only overcome the mental discomfort by actually believing that the tasks were interesting and enjoyable. Um, being paid $20 gives a person a reason to turn pegs. Therefore, there's no reason for them to make up a reason that it was enjoyable to, to lie to themselves. They had an external justification for doing it. The only justification the people that were paid $1 could come up with was that, yeah, this was actually fun and they rated the task more enjoyable. In conclusion, Coping with the nuances of contradiction and contradictory ideas, and this is key point four here, um, this is very mentally stressful. It requires a lot of energy and effort to sit with those seemingly opposite things that um, all seem true. So Festinger argued that some people would inevitably resolve dissonance by blindly believing whatever they wanted to believe. If you look at someone and you go like, how can they believe that when that's obviously not true? They have adapted their beliefs to fit with their actions. It is much easier to twist your belief around, to twist your understanding, to ignore this part of it and emphasize this part of it than it is to actually change your behavior. Uh, so that's what happened to the people that were paid $1. They believe that the task was more fun just because it made them feel better about themselves. I know it's a little bit of, it's a, not a little bit, it is a complex idea. So if you have questions, please let me know. A super interesting experiment that was done very simply, um, turning pegs, creating that dissonance within uh, people. Um, videos to watch, and this one is a song about dissonance, and it actually stuck things in my head way better than I would have thought. It gave me very good ideas for the assignment that is actually done here in the, the cognitive dissonance questions. This will give you great ideas for those questions. So check both of these videos out, important terms, and then our usual assignment. If you guys have any questions, again, I am here. Uh, thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you soon.